we have this guy here uh, we did last class and I recommend following the video because it's quite um, yeah, straightforward. Uh, we have some cool terrains here uh, like you know the crater in, and we have everything in different layers I think the crater is this element the landscape is this other element and we have each of these models on top of our landscape um, they're also in different layers uh, like model A, B and C okay so it's, it's good to double check all the time um, you know by hiding and making sure that things are correct no um, okay so let's do the cage edit for one of the models and I have this one I think it was by uh, Steven here so I'm, what I'm gonna do is just hide all the other stuff because you know for now it's just interfering with my work no so it's gonna leave that model and what I noticed is first that I want to make sure that this is a joint surface but not a group surface so I always like to do ungroup it's a command that ungroups whatever groups that you have dealt with and still if I select I know there's a, a couple of groups there so I'm just gonna select again and ungroup because what we need is to have single surfaces like these ones so whenever I select them they're individual now I know because I have worked with this one it has a problem there I don't know if you guys see it that's gonna give us problems later on you can do two things uh, solid points on for this move that point here and join afterwards uh, or otherwise just you know the consequence is gonna be that that plane is gonna disappear well doesn't matter let's keep on working with it and you know imagine this is happening to you incorrectly so let's see how we could jo uh, you know keep on working even though there's a problem so let's say join now because we need this to be joined if we select it, it has to be one piece it's, and we can already tell that it's actually two pieces no so I'm gonna control C just gonna delete that one you can create another plane here and say join again or etc I'm just gonna leave it like that why not I mean sometimes the problems suggest more alternatives so the command that we are using is cage edit and we're gonna press always bounding box and we press enter several times now your option you were pressing enter all the time and you we didn't change the number of points here that's why you had four points vertically four points horizontally and four points uh, in depth no so I'm gonna keep it like that if you want to change those numbers uh, in the future uh, this is the place to do it click and say two uh, minimum obviously is two, maximum infinite. No, so I'm going to say enter several times, and this is what happens. Cage edit is basically a box that contains whatever model you have selected. Some people were selecting three of them, and it does it for three of them. You can do it for one. You can do it for one plane if you want. You decide what you want to cage edit. No, I'm doing it for one model. So this is time to select, and you can use again this guide if you feel more comfortable and as you can see as you change the model is changing no so again the cage works as if it contains the object inside if we defer deform the container box the object inside deforms as well that's pretty much the concept of cage edit okay so you can move and everything will try to follow engaging with uh, that cage as we have uh, defined no okay so some people were also moving some points here accidentally now if I turn on my uh, path uh, that's gonna be weird to have something intersecting some other thing so we probably do not want that okay control C so if you want to just have your path on and check it so it's um, you know uh, locked I think that's a great option to have uh, at this point I may want to have the landscape on and locked so I can see how I want to change those points so they fit in terms of uh, what I was mentioning before the harmonic or the, the beauty of this project could be related to the landscape in a way no so I'm just moving those points and of course this is more of a compositional game if we had more time I would encourage you to have five six different options that match better 
your landscape, no? Okay, so I'm happy with the result. So at that point, I'm gonna turn off the landscape so we see what we have done. You can escape a couple times and those points from the cage disappear, no? And some people were, oh, I lost the opportunity. I cannot do much more any, any time again. So the cage, the cage that we have created, we can turn on the control points in, in a similar way as how we turn on points for a curve. We just go to point zone, no? And they're there again. Keep on transforming however you want. Okay? You can delete it. And there you have a deformation of your object. Now, if this deforms slightly different, it's because you may have your cage edit option. Uh, let's do it again, cage edit, select, enter, bounding box, enter. You might have these numbers change, the degree. The degree, remember, is the curve degree. So depending on what degree you have here, this is gonna deform in one way or another. Okay, so just keep it in three if you want smooth and clean, curvy deformations, okay? At this point, I'm satisfied. What we're going to do is grasshopper. And we're going to do in grasshopper what you could do actually in Rhino. It, you, you can do it perfectly, but it will take you a bit more to achieve the goal, and you will see why. Grasshopper is a, it's a plugin for Rhino, which means it's a if you, you actually have the same last version of Rhino, you can download for free Grasshopper. It's a plugin similar to V-Ray, but V-Ray is a company that's trying to make money out of this. And Grasshopper is actually a company that works for Rhino. So if you have Rhino, the latest version, you're allowed for free to get Grasshopper. So that's great, no? Now, once you download um, Grasshopper, you can just type Grasshopper. And you see it's a command. So if you guys want to type it and start working with it, um, you're more than welcome. So the moment you type grasshopper, and hopefully we have it here, because you know, you never know, it pops up this window, it starts like, you know, reading. It's green because it's trendy, green colors nowadays, so it's great. Uh, and grasshopper actually, uh, Rhino has different plugins, and they have, uh, you know, Rhino, Grasshopper, Arduino, they all correspond with an animal, so, you know, I think it's a great idea to have problems associated to animals, it's I like that. Um, so if it doesn't come, there's two things that could happen, you can just probably need to come back a couple times, let's see. If you don't see it right away, it's probably because it's just not showing. So you can control tab, go to another window, like, like this one and go back to Rhino again, okay? And then you will have this window up there, okay? So this is the new version of Grasshopper which you have several windows that you can open automatically. I do not recommend clicking those. Just go to File, Open, and you open uh, the Grasshopper file you have downloaded from Blackboard, okay? If you remember Blackboard, uh, assignment six is this guy here. So just download that one, open, it tells you you have several messages, if you say yes, you can see the messages of what the problem is, you can close that because you cannot do much. And Grasshopper, how it works is basic, basically a, an interface that does the same stuff that Rhino does, but it includes several options that regards to parametrics, as in you can place numbers that you can change, you can create more complex um, calculations that repeat uh, as many times as you want. So basically it deals with two things, new that you can put parameters as numbers and you can do multiplicity of actions, okay? And you will see that as we explain this. Uh, this is the window, we can change that and you can change that window around and you can be inside and pan with the right button 
and scroll in and out. As you can see, you can scroll in and start seeing what happens here. I have given you a couple comments uh, as in how to operate. So if you're lost, read those comments that it's telling you exactly what to do. I see some tools here. These are actually tools that are exactly or very similar to Rhino. For example, join. This is join curves. If you stay in the middle of, uh, of one of these commands in Grasshopper, it tells you what it is in the bottom right, and it tells you more information about this tool. So we know that in, in Rhino, we can join curves. We select curves and we join. So the same goes to Grasshopper. We have one thing here that we can move by selecting and moving it. And it's going to join different things in a slightly different way, but uh, under the same concept. It's going to expect some things here, entering, and some other things are coming out. And what things come in and what things come out, we just have to stay on top of those letters and see what Grasshopper tells us. Like, it's expecting some curves and expecting some preserve, like this is parameters, okay? And after doing the join command, what is going to extract is curves, but join, okay? So any of these tools have things that come into them and they come out of them, okay? Now there's one thing in the beginning, and this is read as beginning is in the left, and as you go, the ending things are to the right, okay? Some things are gray, some things are not gray, like this one. Gray means that are hidden, so you can right click on any button and say preview, and that will turn it not gray. And you can right click again, say preview, and it will turn them dark gray, okay? That means that we're hitting it or not hitting it every time we do preview. Another thing, red means something is not going on well. It means it's not working, and you can go to this bubble and see what the problem is, okay? Another thing is orange. Orange is there's no data coming in. So basically nothing is coming in to this C, therefore nothing is going to come out. Okay, we can also place ourselves on top of the bubble and we'll say insufficient curves for joint operation. There's nothing here. Also here, nothing, etc., etc. So how do we put something into Grasshopper? And that's the step that you need to do. You're going to right click, and if you read this text, it's telling us right click on top of Geo. This is Geo. And select, select one geometry. Right click, select one geometry. And remember that uh, Grasshopper is going to close right there. Remember that we joined this, so this is one geometry. We're going to select this one. And automatically, Grasshopper is thinking. And here's the place where it's going to be a little bit tough if you have a very slow machine, OK? Because it's doing all the calculations from Grasshopper. So it's done. I think so. Let's see. Saying not responding, hopefully comes into action in a second. There you go. What? We didn't do any command. I just did right click. And again, everything is ticket. It's noted here. Is a, you have annotations. You right click, set one geometry. Grasshopper closes. You click on the geometry and just wait. And I will tell you why do you have to wait. Basically, you have to wait because Grasshopper is doing its thing, OK? And its thing is calculating stuff. Uh, I'm not going to explain the details of what Grasshopper is doing right now. I will explain a little bit the basics of how it works, OK? Again, if you don't see the window, just, oh, there is. You can go back and forth. Now, here's the thing. Now, there's no orange. There's data coming in. And not only that, when we select these things, they turn here green. 
I'm scrolling in and it's very heavy as you can see these are turning in green okay also this one if I select some of the triangles turning gr in green and not only that I can double click recommend always double clicking and changing this number and you see what it happens say okay let me change also the factor this is a slider a slider means I want to go from one number to another so I double click on radius this pops up and I can say double click here and say up to 0 0.5 for example say okay and I can double click here again and say 3 you will see what's happening what is giving me this pipe here okay once we have that pipe it's only in grasshopper okay how do we extract information from grasshopper to rhino and again we cannot select we cannot do anything with that grasshopper definition until we do what this little text says right click and bake here now it says also place in a new layer each of these guys if your file is very heavy do not bake this pipe uh, you should bake this one actually okay so let's create the layers I want to create one layer and I'm gonna call it pipe and I'm gonna call this A for example and I'm gonna give it a color I don't know like cyan and here is the most important step it's right click bake baking means that we are creating geometry in Rhino from grasshopper it doesn't exist until we say bake say bake pops up a little window it says hey where do you want to bake it basically in what layer you want it so in pipe A you say OK and there is you have now pipes that you can select in grasshopper before we couldn't select it okay next step well, I have one two three four and each of them are called glass color one two three I'm gonna create in the same way four layers one two three and four I'm gonna call it glass color one I'm gonna select it change that to color copy um, name all of this all of them color one color two right click rename color three rename color four great we have four layers let's bake each of these right click bake color one okay you see those they have been created next right click bake color two takes a little while because if there's a lot of surface you will see that select right click bake and this is actually four and I probably forgot the three so I'm gonna do that one right now four okay takes a little while and select this one right click bake I forgot the three so I'm doing it now three and we're done with grasshopper you should do this for each of the models so first is cage edit and right click and place them in the in the same layers and now you don't even have to save the grasshopper because it's actually there so you can close that and let's see what happened here first I'm gonna hide my model A and I'm gonna change the colors for this glass element so they're not exactly the same okay red 
going to say green. I'm going to say blue. And I'm going to say magenta, for example. Let's reduce this. And there we have it. Now, good things about Grasshopper. We could have done the pipes by, for example, using the command that we used the other day. We can say extract borders for each of these faces, and we can say pipe. No, there's a command for pipe. You select those curves, and it creates that pipe. Now you have to select them, and it's actually pre process three steps in the process. This is only right clicking and create. Now you tell me how you select random surfaces one by one and in such a small scale and place them in different layers in Rhino. You can do it, definitely. But it will take you probably four hours, five, and here is a second, no? So basically it's a one example of repeated actions to solve through Grasshopper, no? Now this is obviously the time to save this and again it's going to take a while. You should do this with each of the models, so okay. You should go to the next model. You should cage edit, so turn on, model B, select, cage edit, grasshopper, right click on the first option, select this, op this element, and right click, bake, bake bake into the different layers. Okay, I'm going to leave it there and you have some questions. Uh